This is the new BMW 5 Series, and it's a little bit like beer in the way that you can get it with alcohol, which would be the traditional internal combustion engine car, or you can have it alcohol free, which would be the car I have here, a full electric version, also known as the i5. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, show you the interior, see how practical it is, and take it for a drive. I'm also gonna launch it to see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do actually like alcohol free beer. That's why this bottle is empty. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the design of the new i5 and 5 Series. So it's an all new car with a new design though you can still tell it's a 5 Series. One of the things I should point out is that this particular version of the i5 is the M Performance, so it has some sportier upgrades like this rear diffuser. The standard car's rear bumper looks like this. Thankfully, BMW hasn't been tempted to create some fake exhausty looking trim bits on this particular car. BMW doesn't tend to fake things, unlike Mercedes. <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a cough. Anyhow, this one also has a carbon fiber boot spoiler there. I think that's part of an M Performance Pack upgrade, a styling pack. So moving down the side, you have the classic BMW Hofmeister kink there with the number five just in the corner. Alloy wheel sizes start from 19s, rising to 21s, which is what this car car has and we've got some extended side skirts on this M Performance version. This is what the side skirts on the standard car look like. Sort of a bit cheaper and with a weird diamond pattern. Ugh, don't like that. You got flush door handles as well which is nice and this being the M Performance has the M door mirrors. This is what they look like on the standard car and of course we've got the red brake calipers because we've got the M Performance. Moving at the front once again M Performance has a more aggressive front bumper design there with a slightly smaller central section but big vents at the side for improving airflow down the side of the vehicle. And thankfully, a lot of you will be saying, BMW has retained the more traditional style kidney grills for the 5 Series and i5. This being the M Performance has the blacked out grill. It looks like this on the standard car with some chrome slats in it. Now in some ways, the chrome slats do a good job because they hide this sensor panel here. And because this has a styling upgrade pack, the M Sports styling, whatever it's called, I don't know, you get a black grill surround as well with the LED lighting so you can illuminate illuminated the grill to impress the road users at night. One of the things I really like about this car is that regardless of whether you go for the standard one or this M Performance, you get the indentations in the bonnet that lead to the BMW badge, just like on an M3. I like that a lot. And you've got really sleek light designs with slightly different DRLs than the previous 5 Series, which do look nice when they're illuminated at night. So what do I think overall of the look of this car? Well, I think it's all right. But generally with BMWs, it takes me a little while to warm to their designs. Then I end up really liking them. They like to take a risk, unlike some other manufacturers. And I do think it definitely looks better than a Mercedes EQE. Cameraman Lewis, what do you think of it? I love it. Yeah, he loves it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the price. So, the 5 Series starts at £52,000. This starts from £74,000. Now, if you're thinking about changing your car and want to pay a fair price for your next car and you want to get a fair price for the car you're trading in, you can do all of that through CarWow. Just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Alternatively, you can just Google Help Me CarWow and we will help you change your car the easy way. Here on the inside, the i5 slash 5 series is very nice. The design of the dash is cool, interesting with different layers of materials, such as like we've got like wood trim here, some glass effect here and leather here. And yet it's quite minimalist and very relaxing in terms of the vibe it gives off. Plus material quality as ever with BMWs is really good. You've got soft materials and leather. It's even soft material down here as well. And this looks quite expensive. Glass panel here in the door and the lock and unlock is touch sensitive. Just feel so premium. The seats are super comfy as well. And this car is fitted with the M Sport steering wheel, which has the dead ahead marker on it. And the trickle stitching. And obviously you've got trickle stitching here on the seat belt. And you've got aluminium pedals. Obviously upgrades for this M Performance version. But all cars do still have the same general layout and design. They've updated the screen to make it easier to use. For instance, now with the climate control, it's just less confusing than it was before. So it's easier to operate the fan. It's easier to 
activate the heated seats and set your desired temperature. But it's still harder than just twiddling a knob. As for the rest of the infotainment system, once again, it's still a little bit confusing, but they have added some extra features. For instance, now you have YouTube and you can even watch the Bundesliga. And there's the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which are wireless. And the screen, it's really, really nice. High definition, responsive, hardly any lag. And you can control it with your finger or this rotary dial here, which like it's got crystal effect on it. It's lovely. In fact, it's all quite nicely laid out. And these upgrades here just help lift the cabin further. Digital driver's display is nice and clear. And you've got multiple views that you can just swipe through and change the layout. And it's all quite easy to use. Thankfully, there are no touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel, like with Mercedes cars. You actually have to press them to work them. In terms of practicality, there's decent storage under here with the 12 volt socket there if you're a little bit old fashioned. You have two USB-Cs there and there's wireless charging here for your mobile phone. The glove box is a reasonable size. It's not massive, but it's lined with felt so things don't rattle around. And the door bins are quite large. So here we go, Put my flask in there, my BMW flask and Lewis's. They didn't quite spell your name right, mate. That'll fit in there just a, does it? Yes, just about. I accidentally put the car in drive then when I was messing around with this switch because I had it on so that I could show you the infotainment screen and the digital drivers display. And that's one of the problems with electric cars sometimes. If this had been a petrol car, I wouldn't have done that because I'd have felt it jolt into gear and so on and so forth. <laughs> anyway. We're all okay, aren't we, Lewis? Yeah, just about. Just about, sorry about that, mate. Bit embarrassing. Let's move on to another feature that I quite like to distract everyone. We have a sunroof. Mmm. Plus other luxury features, an electrically operated steering column. Yeah, you don't have to undo a lever on the 5 Series or the i5, it's all done with electrics. Anyway, let's jump into the back and um, hopefully we won't be able to kill Lewis when I'm sat back there. Here in the back seats, there's plenty of room, lots of knee room, lots of head room. However, unlike the previous generation 5 Series, you do feel like you're sat a little bit closer to the floor because I think there's batteries underneath here in this i5, which means the footwells aren't so deep. So there's less under thigh support because your knees are slightly raised. Also, something I'm noticing is that this bit here on the seat seems to dig into your lower back a bit. Shame because otherwise these seats are really, really comfy. You do have ice hooks anchor points, which are really easy to get to. And some other features you have. Yeah, an armrest. Shame the cup holders are exposed because you end up putting your wrist in them, but at least you do have through loading. So three-way folding rear seats. If you need to carry three people in the back at once, there is a hump in the floor there. And that's because this car is also available as an internal combustion engine car. So you need that for the exhaust or for the prop shaft leading to the rear wheels. But the central seat, it's not the comfiest, but it's not terrible. In terms of storage back here, well, the door bins are a decent size, but bizarrely, there are no pockets on the seat backs. What's that all about? You do have these USB-C ports for charging your device and a little thing there where I think you can attach things like a holder for your iPad. You got two USBs there and your controls for your rear climate. But anyway, let's check out what this car's like in the boot. The i5 has a luggage capacity of 490 litres. By comparison, the Mercedes EQE is 430 litres. So BMW fanboys celebrate in the comments. Now there's not much of a load lip to lift stuff over. It's quite handy that. And the opening for a saloon is actually quite large. And there's some more storage underneath here, which you're probably gonna have to fill up with your cables. If you need more space, you can fold down the rear seats like this. Now so you do have to get in to do it. Look. Oh, there we are, and there's tie down points and stuff. Look at that. Also, this particular car is fitted with, oh yeah, that was satisfying, a tow hitch. And this is the towing capacity of the i5. Now there is one thing that's missing. I can't find a 12 volt socket anywhere here in the boot. Also, the boot capacity of the i5 is slightly less than the 5 Series. 490 compared to 520 for that car. And that brings us to five or nine things about this new i5. Despite being a rather expensive vehicle, the BMW i5 does not come with adaptive cruise control as standard. Like you get it as standard on a relatively inexpensive Toyota Yaris. Here on the BMW, you're gonna have to pay an extra 2,000 pounds for the technology pack if you want that feature. Oh, and another thing about it is if you have got it fitted and you want to alter the distance that the system keeps you from the car in front, you can't just press a button on the steering wheel to do that. You have to go into a menu on the screen, then press a button on the screen, which is not ideal. 
Because the i5 doesn't have a huge internal combustion engine under the bonnet, BMWs cleverly use that freed up space for extra storage. Let me show you. Perfect. Uh, Matt, I don't think that's safe. Huh. There is a price to pay for going electric with the new 5 Series. While a 520i weighs in about 1.7 tonnes, the i40 tips the scales at 2.1 tonnes. If you want the M60, that weighs in at a hefty 2.3 tonnes. Come and have a look at this. This part of the dash protrudes and it's hard plastic and depending on how you like to get into the car, you can bang your knee on it. I am speaking from experience because I've done it twice. Just follow my knee. This is what happens. Oh, and that hurts. When you've got the air conditioning on, you can hear this weird dripping sound. Sort of echoes through the air vent. I think it's water drips from the condenser, just dripping. It's weird. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. You can actually set the temperature of the footwell independently to the rest of the car, which is kind of cool or hot, depending on what setting you choose. Though actually, now I can really hear that dripping sound. It's got worse with the higher fan speed. Oh well. The car's satellite navigation system will plan your route via charging locations and it'll figure out which ones are the best to go for and how long you need to spend at each of them in order to make it to the next charging location and then onto your final destination. And it'll plan the overall route so that it minimizes your overall time spent sat charging. Works in the same way that the Tesla system does. Also, if you are starting to run low on charge, you can go into a max range mode. This will reduce the car speed to a maximum of 60 miles an hour and turn off the air conditioning and heated and cooled seats. You can play computer games using your phone as a controller through the car screen. Look. <laughs> And you can play with up to three other players, so four of you in total, having battles. There's a wide range of games that you can choose from and it's all very easy to set up. You just scan a QR code to connect your phone to the car and then away you go. You can play. I suppose you're going to do this while you're waiting for the car to charge. The car uses these aero alloy wheels to reduce drag. So there's these inserts which fill in the gaps of the spokes to help improve airflow. Thing is, BMW is considering making these switchable so you'll be able to get different inserts for your car, switch them in and out to change the look of your wheel. The M60 comes with M adaptive sport suspension. Now that includes dampers which are switchable between comfort or sport for a stiffer setting. Also, it has active anti-roll bars, so these will keep the car nice and flat in the bends, but they decouple when you're going straight to help the car ride over bumps. Now let's talk about engines, motors and charging and all that good stuff. So this is obviously the electric vehicle, but the entry level 5 series uses a good old fashioned two litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, which puts out 200 horsepower and drives the rear wheels only for an eight speed automatic gearbox. Then there's the i40, which is the entry level battery version that uses a single electric motor driving the rear wheels, which puts out 340 horsepower and it comes with an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is good for a range of 300. 61 miles, according to BMW. Then there's this range topping M60 version, which has two electric motors, one on each axle, so it's four wheel drive, and it puts out 601 horsepower. And its range from the same 82 kilowatt hour battery pack is 320 miles. Now, by comparison, a standard entry level Mercedes EQE 350 can do 376 miles on a full charge. Now, in terms of charging itself, on DC charging, it can do up to 205 kilowatts, and as standard, the i5 will charge on AC at 11 kilowatts, though you can pay extra to get 22 kilowatt charging on AC power, which is probably worth upgrading to. Now, there will be other versions of the 5 Series available, plug-in hybrids, which will have a maximum electric only range of up to 60 miles on a full charge. But which version of the 5 Series or i5 would I pick? Well, if you want to find out, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to go to the CarWow configurator.
I'm going to start off testing the new i5 by driving it on the highway and I've actually just switched into a different car. So this particular car is fitted with a very special adaptive cruise control which can let you go completely hands-free at the wheel. Now there's a reason why there's this man sat next to me. His name is Hans Martin, say hello. Hello. Basically, this car has level two autonomous driving. It's not legal to drive with your hands off the wheel in Portugal, like it isn't in the UK. It is in Germany and the US, but Portugal has given BMW a special permit for us to try this system on this car here in Portugal, so long as Hans Martin is sat next to me. Isn't that right? That is true. Okay, so I'm going to enable the system now and you do it like the normal adaptive cruise control that you get on you know, the 7 Series and so on and so forth. Just press that button there and I should go assisted driving and I can alter my speed but it'll do it automatically as well. And when you've got the cruise control set, so you're going to a destination, the car will automatically change lanes for you. But it won't just change lanes without you letting it. You have to authorise it to do that and to authorise it, you actually just look in your mirror to make sure everything is clear and it authorizes it so we're going to show that working now so we're going to accelerate and there's a car in front and the system will ask me do you want to do it do you want to change lanes and so i just look like that and it should change lanes there we go <laughs> there's actually some special infrared cameras just in there which are watching where my eyes are looking and you can see when i'm looking in the mirror and that i've checked that everything's safe and now off we go and I can sit here like this. Now, in order to make this possible, this car needs to have some extra tech beyond the usual autonomous driving level one system. So you have to have a satellite navigation map that is super, super accurate. You know, sometimes you'll be like on the motorway coming to a junction, it thinks you've left at the junction, you haven't. When you're going completely hands-free, you can't have that happening. But you've also got extra use of the surround view cameras to make sure that you're actually dead in your lane and where the GPS thinks you are. And then it can all work. I'm not allowed to go on my phone. I could in theory pick it up, but I shouldn't be distracted. Yeah, so I'll put that down. And now I can just sit back. And still like that, that's fine. But it comes in handy of just like looking in your mirror rather than reaching for the turn signal. Because normally when you're driving, right, yeah. your hands on the steering wheel, yeah, yeah? You have a reference, right? So you have a reference of where to like operate the, the turn signal. But if your hands are in your lap, it's a bit more awkward to get to it. So this solution of just like looking in your mirrors is more efficient. How do I make it go back over there? whenever there's enough space to look out in front of you. Okay, so if I back off on the old speed a bit, there we go, it's a bit slower. Yeah. And then can I look over there? And you first have to wait for the offer. There we go. You look. That was premature, it's a kind of problem I suffer from. Anyway, let's speed up again and just overtake. Yeah. So here we go, it's asking me now, do I want to overtake? Yes, there we go. Oh, very good. Anyway, Hans Martin, I think I'm going to switch back into my own car because I've got to appraise this vehicle, see what it's like to drive. And it'd be a bit awkward if I said it was crap and you from BMW are sat next to me. I'd rather say that in secret than upload it to the internet and then let you see when I'm safe back home in the United Kingdom. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> now that Hans Martin is out of the car, I can tell you that yes, this car is very crap. Nah, don't worry, I'm only joking. So when you're cruising down the motorway, it's very, very quiet and relaxing. You get a little bit of wind noise just from this A-pillar, a little bit of tyre noise, but it's so, so faint. Just very, very chilled. And then if you need to overtake, oh, you have the performance. Good, comfy, long distance cruise up. But how far can you actually go? Checking this car's economy and efficiency, it's been averaging over the past 3,000 or so kilometers, 25.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. When I convert that to miles per kilowatt hours, it comes to doing the math, 2.44 miles per kilowatt hour. And then you multiply that up by the battery capacity of 82 kilowatt hours. That means a real world range of this car is about 200 miles. It's supposed to be 320. Oh dear. That's not very good. I wonder if part of the issue is that this car has basically been driven by a bunch of journalists before me and they won't have been driving very economically. They'll have been trying out the car's performance. So that will have affected the efficiency, obviously. So I would say that possibly that figure, 200 miles, is the minimum that you should get if you're driving like a motoring journalist. Anyway, this is a good location to try this car out round town. So I'm driving over some old cobble streets and oh my gosh, it's dealing with them very well. Just listen. There is hardly any suspension noise. When you come to a little speed hump like that, 
you don't feel much at all. It really is very relaxing the way this car goes down the road. Despite the weight, it just handles itself extremely well. And it's very easy, steering is light enough. You also have a throttle pedal that works with you. It's not too sensitive, but if you want to suddenly pick up, it absolutely will do. And then there's the brakes. Sometimes with electric cars, they can feel a bit grabby, but these are very progressive and easy to use. You can slow down at just the rate you want to. And of course, you can go into B mode, which means that when you're just pootling around town, you have extra regen braking effect. So you can actually come to a complete stop by lifting off the accelerator. Sorry, person behind. I know that's a bit annoying. I can quite clearly see him as well because actually rearward visibility is pretty good on this car. So too is the view out the mirrors and the view forward, despite this big fat pillar here bit of a blind spot that way. driving around town this is super relaxing and it's definitely going to be more relaxing than the internal combustion engine 520 version what with its engine whirring away and its gear shifting there's a lot to be said for electric cars driving around town they are definitely the way to go for urban driving however while this car does feel very expensive in the way that it goes about its business i've just noticed something that feels super cheap and maybe it's the reason that bmw decided to let you just be able to activate lane change by looking in the mirrors rather than using the turn signal because these turn signals feel cheap. In the old 5 Series, you get this lovely squidgy damped effect when you turn them off and on. This is just like some budget Toyota. Ugh. Oh dear, BMW, are you going downhill? Yeah, I just activated the voice assistant by saying... Right, I've now come to a twisty road, so I'm gonna put the car into sports mode. It's a bit of a faff, I have to press a button down here then go to the screen. What that's done is sharpened up the throttle response, so it's quite literally brutal. Oof, and much harder to control and make it smooth. It's also stiffened up the suspension to help keep the car flat in the bends. Let's see what it's like when you wanna have some fun. So this anti-roll bar system definitely helps keep the car flat, but I don't know if you could hear my tires then. There's no getting away from the fact that this car is heavy and it will will start to push wide and overwhelm its tires. I don't think there's the same element of fun in this car because of the weight as the old internal combustion engine V8 powered M550i. And I think this is gonna be one of the problems that all manufacturers, not just BMW, are gonna struggle with when they're producing these sportier versions of their cars. You see, in the past, not only did you improve the performance, you improved the sportiness of the drive. And here with the electric cars, yes, they do improve the performance but because you got the added weight of the electrical system it's harder to improve the way they handle so while you get more speed more power more like whoa that's quick you don't necessarily get any more fun when it comes to throwing the car down a twisty road that said overall this bmw i5 does drive very very nicely indeed but i would imagine that the one to go for is the normal i40 it'll be quick enough and there won't be that much of a difference to how it handles compared to this m60 according to BMW this car do 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Now time it with my specialist timing gear. Whoa, launch time, it's shaking the car. <laughs> it makes the sound of a gun going off as you accelerate away. Woo, there we go, we have the time. 3.78 seconds, bang on the money pretty much. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW i5? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think that if you're looking for a posh, premium electric car that's good for your family, but also good to drive, you should go right ahead and buy this. It's easily as good as a Mercedes EQE, but looks quite a bit better. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And on that box there, take it to Car Wow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on it in an online auction. Thanks for watching.